As you will, is uh, God's word, His own testimony uh, concerning His Son Jesus Christ, sent into the world, of course, to be a savior, uh, to bring us back to God from the dark path of sin. You, uh, a stranger to God's word, maybe, perhaps in these. Uh, serious times, it's a time for some folk to get a little bit more serious and to consider eternal matters, which of course are of the, the utmost, the greatest importance. To seek you first the kingdom of God, Jesus says, not the kingdom of this world, not the kingdom of darkness, not the kingdom of apostasy and sin, but the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness revealed in the gospel and all the rest, all these other things will be added unto you. The Old Testament of the Bible, one of the authors of the book of Psalms, King David he was, he's referred to elsewhere as the sweet psalmist of Israel. He gave us a book of songs called the Psalms. And then of course he speaks about his greater son, that is of course uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he speaks about a distinction, would you know, that God makes. Uh, between, uh, you know, within the human race. You, I know, have all kinds of distinctions that you make, the rich and the poor, the black and white, and, and so on. So many distinctions, but you know, God has only but two, the godly and the ungodly. The ungodly, he says, that is those who live and die without God, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. The ungodly, they shall perish in their way. But then, of course, over against them is the godly, those whom God brings to a knowledge of himself through his Son, Jesus Christ, declared to be righteous through faith in his name, so King David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, uh, he says here in his 
fourth song, Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. And of course, God did time and again. God does hear the prayers of the godly, of the righteous, of those who call upon him through his son, Jesus Christ. You in distress today, some kind of trouble, fear it may be. Oh, there's a lot that causes fear in our world today, is there not? Viruses, earthquakes, tsunamis, well, there's just no end of it. The troubles that come upon us, the judgments even that fall upon us because of a world and because of a nation and unbelief. Not a surprise to me, COVID-19, what surprises me is that we don't get more of it and more serious. No, that's not the surprising thing, my friends, when you consider the apostasy of the human race. The Bible does say, don't you know, that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who repress, hold down the truth in unrighteousness. No, no surprise, my friends, that there's worry, concern, and distress, but oh, says God, that men would call upon him, that they would pray to him as King David does in his distress. He at the time when he speaks here, he's fleeing from an evil, wicked son. I dare say that there are not a few people in Litchfield in your city today who have uh, sons and daughters that you would rather flee from, sons and daughters of Belial even. But why? Why should that be? Maybe because you never raised them right. Maybe you sent them to the state school to be educated by the devil in their unbelief and apostasy. Maybe because you never read God's word to them. Maybe because you never taught them that there was a God. And time will come when they'll be in serious distress as well. I recommend to you in your distress, whatever it might be, my friends, that you call upon the name of the Lord as King David does here. And of course, David goes on to tell us how that God hears the cry, how he hears him because of his righteousness. Not that David was righteous in himself, nobody is. We're all of us unrighteous, unholy, ungodly as we come into this world. Now David's righteousness, the author of it was God, it was given to him. Righteousness, you see my friends, is by faith and by faith alone. Grace alone, says God, faith alone, in Christ alone. That's the only way a body, a person can be credited as declared to be righteous in the sight of God. We are all naturally speaking and naturally born wanting for righteousness. Your righteousness, as God says, are like filthy rags, the best of your deeds. No, that's the problem, isn't it? wanting for righteousness before God. The ungodly shall not stand in the way of the, the, the judgment. Why? Well, simply because they are unrighteous, ungodly, unholy, without God and without hope in this world and certainly without hope when the day of judgment comes. So when that day comes, you need to be found trusting not in yourself, not in the foolish Darwin or Dawkins, not in these monsters of unbelief, but you need to be found trusting in the righteousness of another, an alien righteousness, one that belongs 
one that God's the author of, and his righteousness is found only in the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ. It's when a man but a woman puts their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ alone before God, God dons the judge's cap and brings down the gavel and declares that person to be righteous, perfectly righteous. And of course, God hears the cries. He hears the petitions and prayers of the righteous. David, his righteousness was in God, not in himself. He dare not. He tells us later on that he was born in sin. He was conceived in sin. And born in sin, came into the world shaped in iniquity. So what claim could he have to a righteousness of his own? And what claim could you have to a righteousness of your own? You too were conceived in sin. That's where your sin career began, don't you know? When you were conceived at that moment, ping, at that moment of conception in your mother's womb, that's where your sin began. You inherited it from your parents who inherited it from theirs all the way back to Adam to the first man. Conceived in sin, born in sin, live in sin and die in sin. But for the grace of God intervening and bringing you to himself and to his righteousness. Oh, now my friends, David, he makes no, he makes no claim to be righteous in himself. Sinner, he says, I was born in this stuff. I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. What have you got to offer God? Your good deeds, your religiosity, your attendance maybe at yon cathedral where you'll not hear any gospel in any shape or form no good news there no my friends no claim all you are any one of us just a lump to walk and breathe and talk and sin that's all a tiny little speck of sinful dust on the horizon of god's universe waiting to be blown away into a lost eternity if you're not made righteous by God. If that is, unless by the grace, the sovereign, free, merciful grace of God, the astonishing grace of God, you are saved. It's by grace, you see, it's not your choosing, but God. You did not choose me, Jesus said to his disciples, I chose you, and God chooses who will be saved, not you, not I. His grace, you see, his grace that comes, that he dispenses through the preaching of the gospel, that which I'm doing here today, announcing, declaring, setting before you the way of salvation in order that you might hearken, hear, not the voice of a preacher, not the voice of a man, but look beyond such and hear the voice of the good shepherd who says, my sheep, are, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. But as he said to the opposition, perhaps maybe the reason you can't hear my voice today is because you're not one of my sheep. God chose those sheep before the foundation of the world. And those who hear the voice of the shepherd, they not only hear, but they turn from their sin, from their wicked ways, from their apostasy, their unbelief, and they put their trust firmly and solely in the Good Shepherd and the Savior, Jesus Christ. So you see, the righteousness of King David and of the godly 
God is the author of it, and he witnesses to it, testifies to it. And he's the one who maintains it, and even rewards them for it. Almost as if they had done it themselves, but they hadn't. It came to them from God, and God alone. But the ungodly, or the ungodly there, their unrighteousness, well, David says, O ye sons of men, born of Adam, natural born sinners, that is, how long will you turn my glory into shame? What about England's glory? Has that not turned to shame? It's what you used to talk about, but it's gone, 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 gone. England has returned like a dog to its vomit. Back to the old paganism from which God fetched you some 400 years ago. And now you hold with utter contempt the name of God and his Savior, Jesus Christ. You've exchanged it for a mess of unbelief. You've exchanged it for a mess of Darwinianism. A fool and blind who hated God just the same as the majority of the inhabitants of Litchfield do today. Shame on you. You've turned the glory. You've turned your glory to shame. But even now God, in his kindness and his mercy, yet causes the gospel to be declared amongst you. That in itself is a kindness, is it not? You're not totally abandoned that God sent his son into the world is a mercy, a mercy beyond, beyond all mercy in providing us with a mediator, a savior, one able to save to the uttermost, the most ungodly in Litchfield today. No pressure on God, no necessity on God's part, merely out of his heart of love mercy and kindness he sent his son into the world and even now today he sends his servants into all the world enduring with the ungodly forbearing with them but my friends causing the good news of the gospel to be declared amongst you even today that you might turn that you might be saved that you might repent of your unrighteous deeds and that you might turn to the only Savior, my Lord Jesus Christ. Loving, loving, says King David, loving vanity. Is it not, not the love of your generation? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity, says the preacher. In the Bible, that is. Vanity. Meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. That is without God, that is to be ungodly, that is to be without God in this world and in the world to come. You see, your faith, your lives of vanity and your loving of vanity is kind of like you're on a treadmill. You know, you go to the gym and you get on the treadmill, you may spend 15 minutes, you may spend an hour on the treadmill, but you ain't no further forward by the time you finish. But here you are, loving vanity, loving emptiness, loving that which is utterly meaningless, a life on the treadmill, and you come to the end of it, 70 years, 80, whatever, whatever, as long as God gives you and you're no further forward than you started. Still, still in your apostasy, still in your unbelief, still in your natural state and condition, is there a day, is there a time that you can point to when you can say, that's the day when I was changed. That's the day when I was reborn. That's the day when God came to me and saved me. Because unless that vile nature in which you were conceived and born 
has been changed. My friend, you come to the end of your existence. I do not call it life because that's not what it is. It's not life. You don't know life without God and without his son, Jesus Christ. No, when you come to the end of your earthly existence and you're no further forward, no change, you've not been born again, you will wish, madam, you will wish you had never been born at all. Oh, I tell you, Jesus tells you, ye must, ye must be born again. Marvel not, marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. Seeking lies and conceit, fabrications, that's what you seek after. You don't seek after the truth, you don't love the truth. And it's because you have not received a love of the truth, says God, that he gives you over to strong delusions, to believe the lie, to believe the lie. And you believe the lie and you live out of the lie. You believe Darwin's lie, Dawkins's lie. You believe the lies of your generation. That's how you can come to the stupid conclusion that a man can become a woman and vice versa. Such a person has to be deluded and that deluded has come to you from God. Why? Because you have not received the love of the truth, says God. So he gives you over to strong delusions to believe that which is untruthful. It's only the truth that will set you free, Jesus said. The truth about God and the truth about your own state and condition. Natural born state and sin. Simple nature, simple practice, every which way. And the truth about God's Son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world to rescue you from such a condition as he alone can. Seeking lies, conceits, and fabrications. For how long? How long will you seek after life, says King David? Well, until you perish. Until you perish in them. Until you perish in your sin. Unless God, by his grace, comes to you. Unless God favors you. That's what grace is, my friends. Favor. The undeserved favor. You can't be religious for it. Yeah? You can't be religious for it. You can't be good for it. You can't be nothing for it. It's free. Grace. Gratis. Free grace, my friends. Undeserved. Totally amazingly undeserved because what you deserve what you deserve <laughs> no worse i tell you worse than covid 19 what you deserve is eternal damnation it's what we all deserve and what we all get but for the grace of god that comes to you in the preaching of the gospel but what will you do with it that's the question that's the ultimate question. But how long will you seek after life? And how long, how long will you believe the lie? And how long will you live out of the lie, the principle of the lie? Until you perish. Until you perish in your sin. Unless the grace of God comes to you and grants you salvation. Until that as you sink down. Down! Hell is down, don't you know? What are you doing? It's not weird. You got a question? Pardon? You got a question? No, I'm like, you're like, you're saying, what's your opinion on same-sex relationships? Same one? Same-sex relationships. What about them? I don't have an opinion. I don't have an opinion about it. What's your thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why, why would you ask a question like that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What? what? We're just interested. But why? Why would I have an opinion about that? I can't hear you. What? I can tell you what God says about it. Yeah. 
That's not the theme of my my teaching today, but if it was, yes, I would. Yes, I would. I I believe I believe God's word in its entirety. Yeah. There were there were some cities in the Bible. You can read for yourself. You probably know already. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Read about Sodom and Gomorrah because that's the end of your same-sex relationships. Exactly. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. I still can't hear you, you need to speak up. There shouldn't be an end to them. There shouldn't need to be an end to them. What God says is wrong about them when you're preaching about that, saying that you teach people that. Why not? Wrong. What's wrong? God says it's wrong. God, God says it's unnatural. It's not me wrong. God says it's unnatural. It's not, what you were, it's not what you were made for. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's probably not made no, it's for not. people that we love. Excuse right. me. No, it's God. not. Right. Only, they, only, they came, only they came except. Only only became acceptable about five minutes ago in your society. No, we didn't. Twenty years, twenty years ago, you had been locked up. Twenty years, twenty years ago, you had been locked up for it. Something amongst many things that I had to repent of, the same as you need to repent of your present relationship. Before God before God takes you out of this world and you sink down until they perish, says David. Until they perish in their sin. Sink down into hell, that is. Because that's the end of ungodliness. That's the end of unrighteousness. That's the end of your seeking after lies, living out of the lie, and believing the lie. But God, you see, has set apart the ungodly from self. The godly, that is. The godly. Those in God have made to be godly. God says that they Okay. Like here. So you think you think that I shouldn't be gay? Look at him, he's he's so gay. He looks so happy. He's so happy. He's so happy. What's I got to do with it? Happiness. God said that in the Bible he also said that love is thine neighbour as thyself. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the gospel, believe the gospel, and will be saved. Delivered, my friends, from their sinful state and na nature. Why, my friends, do people believe lies? Why do people follow after lies? Why do people go after that which is ungodly, unnatural, and even outright wicked? Because they have a sinful nature, that's why. A nature that only God can change, can transform. Can you change the spots on a leopard, says God? Your answer would be no. Impossible. That would take a miracle. Well, how can you are accustomed to doing evil? How can you do that which is good, says God? That too would take a miracle. In other words, you must be born again. That nature, vile nature in which you are conceived and born has to be altered, changed, transformed by the grace of God. But that's what he does for those whom he has chosen unto salvation. And my friend guarantees a complete salvation justifies them, sets them apart for himself, and my friends completes their salvation. They shall never, never perish, says the Savior. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Peace with God, my friends. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, hast makest me dwell in safety, says David. He's able to lie down in peace. Why? He doesn't, he doesn't have sleepless night. Why? Because he's resting in his maker and the one who saved him and the one who made him righteous. He has peace with God. And because he has peace with God, he has the peace of God that passes all understanding. Oh, peace with God, my friends. First and foremost, you must have peace with God. The heart is enmity against God, the Bible says, hostile to God in your minds. And my friends, until that hostility, until that rage against your maker is laid down before the cross, of his son Jesus Christ repented of and you believe in and trust in his son Jesus Christ you have no peace with God and never will have peace with God only through my Lord Jesus Christ can that peace be had he died on that cross he shed his precious blood the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world and would take yours away today. Should you but trust in him, should you but give up, surrender, yield yourself to him, and through his death on the cross that you might be reconciled to God, brought back to God from that dark, dark path of sin. Peace with God, my friends, because of the grace of God, because of the gift of God, and therefore the peace of God, the peace of God that passes all understanding beyond human comprehension, because it's supernatural, because it's miraculous. That's not the natural state of the human heart. The natural state of your heart is of distress of concern, of worry, of fear, terrible fear and dread stalks your world today and humanity. There is no peace, and there can be no peace, says my God, for the wicked, for the ungodly. They shall not stand in the judgment. They shall perish in the way, in the way of their ungodliness, in the way of their distress. Oh, you may have distresses, you may have fears today. You may be afraid, afraid of a, a return of the virus, 
That's not your greatest worry. You need to fear God. You fear Him. You've got nothing else to fear, I tell you. Peace with God and the peace of God through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Beloved sinners, sinners, my friends, that's the qualification. You have to be a sinner. But you deny your sin, you say, I'm without sin. You call God a liar and you put yourself beyond the pale. You just believed yet another lie. You've lied to yourself, but that's, that's what the human heart does. Because the heart is deceitful above all things, says God, and desperately wicked. You deceive your own selves. You deceive your own hearts. You deceive one another. You're deceived by false religion. You're deceived by all manner of things. Why? Because your heart is deceitful and you love the lie and live out of the lie. Believe the lie and reject the truth. And so you cannot be saved unless you repent of the lie and believe in God's Son, Jesus Christ. I will lay me down. I will lay me down in peace, says, says David. Even in the grave, even when he comes to the end of his life, he can lay himself down in peace in the grave, knowing that he'll awake in the morning and be with and be like God. But you, my friend, oh, the day is coming. God's answer to your disobedience, to your unbelief, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The wages of sin is death. It is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. No, no laying down of yourself in the grave in peace. When your time comes, my friends, the king of terrors will come to you just like everybody else and slip his slimy fingers around your soul and draw it out of your body and return it to God and he will allot it its place in eternity in the damnation of hell unless by the grace of God you are saved. You may be a king. You may be a bishop. You may just be a street preacher. But everybody faces the grim reaper. Everybody. The young, the middle-aged, and the old. COVID-19 has taught you nothing else. It ought to have taught you the brevity and the fragility of life. Eternity is coming. Hell or heaven is coming your way. My friends, the only way you can lay yourself down in peace in the grave when your day comes is if you are saved because if you are not if you're not you will awaken you will awaken up in hell too late then to cry too late then to whine too late then to ask for a bible too late then to ask for a savior then then you'll be calling them the rocks and the mountains to come down and hide you from the presence of the Lamb. The Lamb of God who today would take your sins away, wash you and make you white as snow, wash you and make you clean of all the filth and muck of the lusts of your sinful heart and being. Wash you and make you clean, whiter than snow, and acceptable. Fit, my friends, for living, fit for life, fit for purpose, and fit for God, and fit for heaven one day. Will you, will you lay yourself down in the grave when it comes to the end of your earthly, vain, meaningless existence in peace? 
are my friends in the fear and dread of the coming wrath of God. The wrath of God is revealed, is being revealed even now amongst you because of your ungodliness and unrighteousness in repressing the truth of the knowledge of God. Today, my friends, if you will hear his voice, he says, harden not your heart. The gospel comes to you. It will do one of two things for you. It will either harden you or it will soften you. It's the savor of life unto life and of death unto death. Confirms your death sentence or make you alive in Jesus and give eternal life to you in the way of repentance, faith towards the Son of God. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent except you repent says jesus ye shall all likewise perish in your sin in your ungodly way god commands faith my friend believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house thy house salvation my friend faith and faith alone only faith only believe says jesus if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth even your salvation salvation belongs to the lord he gives it to whoever he wills to give it to will he give it to you today Will you receive it? He came to his own, but his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to those that believed on his name, he gave the power, authority that is, to become the children of God, as opposed to a child of wrath, my friend. Wrath. Flee the wrath to come. Obey the commandment of the Savior who loved sinners and gave himself for them that you might escape such an end, that you might not perish in the way, and that you might be able to stand in the judgment. Repent ye, he said. Litchfield, repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. You like a copy of God's word? Check these things out for yourself. See that they are so according to God's word New Testament of the Bible offered to you freely will cost no obligation to you. You would like one? Feel free to come and ask for one. May God bless you and of mercy. Mercy, I say, in these dangerous, dark, dark days in your land, in your world. Eternity is coming. Think on it, my friend. You like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy I say, upon your precious, never dying soul.